There are a lot of resources to manage in Hearts of Iron 4. You have the resources that affect how quickly you can produce war material, such as steel, tungsten, and oil. Then there's military experience, which is required to create variants of your armor, planes, and ships, or to alter your division designs. But above and beyond all that, political power is likely your most valuable resource. There are two reasons political power is valuable, supply and demand. You only gain two political power points per day, and there are very few ways to improve that rate. At the same time, there are many valuable uses for political power, and that's where we'll start today. Political power can be spent in four different ways. Managing your government, focusing on a national goal, diplomatically influencing other countries, and occupying territory. First, we'll take a look at the government side. These 18 options will allow you to tailor your country to a specific grand strategy. Do you want to build a war machine made up of superior tanks using the Blitz Doctrine while exporting your vast resources in order to get better research speed and factory output? Or are you going for a strategy of heavy strategic bombers that emphasizes munitions over manpower? These are the kinds of decisions you'll be making in this window. Now, most of these options are empty at the start of the game. Only the three laws have been pre-chosen for you, and even these you'll want to change at some point. The cost of these options is usually between 150 and 300 political power. This means if you spent political power only on these options, it would take you over three and a half in-game years to complete each one. Thus, it is important to not only make the right choices, but also to choose them in the correct order. Most of these will not get chosen until the war is well underway. Choose those options which are most critical to your strategy early on. I'll discuss these options in greater detail in another video. Another very important use of your political power is the national focus tree. Each of the seven major nations has its own unique national focus tree. This includes the US, the UK, France, Germany, Italy, the USSR, and Japan. All other nations use a generic focus tree, though it is likely that expansions will add unique focus trees to more nations in the future. Each of these focuses takes 70 in-game days to complete and costs one political power per day. They all grant significant benefits, some of which can't be gained from any other game system. As a result, you'll want to be exploring one of these options throughout most of the game, and since you only generate two political power per day, this effectively means your political power income is going to be cut in half through most of the game. This tree works much like tech trees in other games. You may always choose any focus from the top row, but you may also choose any focus which is connected to the top row by a chain of already completed focuses. The dotted lines here indicate that if you have completed either Chinese Puppet or War with China, you can then select Sever Sino-German Ties. The double solid lines here indicate that you must complete both Naval Air Innovations and Advanced Torpedoes in order to explore Convoy Protection. The red exclamation point with the green arrows indicate an exclusive choice. You can either focus on Northern Expansion or Southern Expansion. Once you choose one of them, the other becomes unavailable. The benefits you get from these are different from country to country, but here are some examples from the Japanese tree. Just keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list. These focuses here grant you war goals against a specific country, which are required in order to start a war. You can also gain these war goals in other ways, but they are more expensive and time-consuming. These options can also guide you through the game if you're not familiar with the historical context or goals of the nation that you're playing. For each of these trees, options exist for both the historical path and ahistorical paths that are more or less historically plausible. For example, the Southern Expansion Focus represents the historical strategy chosen by the Japanese High Command. It grants the ability to declare war on the UK and the Dutch, so that you can acquire the valuable resources in the Dutch East Indies. The Northern Expansion option was an actual plan debated by the leaders of Japan at the time, and involves an all-out war with the USSR. These focuses here will kick off historical event chains, which often result in another country needing to make a specific choice. For example, Sever Sino-German Ties starts an event where the Japanese ask Germany to remove its advisors from China. If Germany says yes, then China loses the special bonus that those advisors provided from the start of the game. If Germany says no, then China keeps the bonus. This set of focuses grants bonuses to research in specific areas. 
In the unique trees, like this Japanese one, they usually grant bonuses to areas where the actual historical nation excelled. For example, in this tree, you'll have easier access to research bonuses regarding your navy and air force. Germany, on the other hand, gets focuses close to the top of the tree which grant them bonuses to armor and land doctrine research. These focuses allow you to found your own faction, or join an existing faction, in this case, the Axis. These focuses grant you free building slots, factories, or dockyards. This one here grants you some free fortifications. These grant nationwide bonuses such as more manpower or a better war economy. This is only scratching the surface, and as you can see, there are 41 possible options presented here, not counting the mutually exclusive options. If you wanted to research all of them over the course of the game, it would take almost 8 years. That means that, again, some of the most important decisions you'll make are not what to choose, but rather what order to choose them in. In one game with one strategy, you might choose one set of focuses first, but in another game with the same nation, you might try a different strategy and choose a different set of focuses first. Also remember that whenever you're working on a focus, it cuts your political power gain in half. So if you desperately need political power to adjust your laws, hire more staff, or work on some diplomacy, you might need to hold off on picking a new focus for a short while. Now if the number of choices overwhelms you, don't panic, hold on to your towel. Try to look at the top options, the ones that you can research right now, and ignore the ones lower in the tree. What would be good for you right now? Faster naval production or a larger manpower pool? Once you get more familiar with a nation, you can start planning your choices to get to the bottom of a tree in order to get a specific focus that fits your strategy. The last way you'll explicitly spend your power is through diplomatic options. Justifying a war goal, improving relations, guaranteeing another nation's independence, starting a coup, and boosting your party's popularity in another nation all cost various amounts of political power. Some of these options cost political power over time, and some just require a single lump sum investment. Finally, there's the political power cost to occupation policies. These apply only to territories that you have taken, and only while the war is still raging. Once you sit down at the peace table and annex those territories, they stop resisting, and the political power drain goes away. The listed political power costs are per territory per day. In this example, Romania has nine territories that have been conquered by Hungary, and Hungary is using the gentle occupation policy. This costs 0.01 political power per day per state, which results in a total of minus 0.09 political power, which is about 4.5% of his total political power income. If you were to use the harshest occupation policy and are currently occupying large swaths of territory in the USSR, for example, it could wind up costing you much more. If you'd like more detail on the government choices in Hearts of Iron 4, check out the advanced guide entitled Laws and Staff. Otherwise, you could continue on to the next basic guide, Research and Division Design.